one of the most important topics in magnetic effect of current is cyclotron it is a particle accelerator and is used to speed up positively charged particles like protons neutrons and alpha particles these high speed particles are required for nuclear research the principle on which this device works is a charged particle can be accelerated to very high speeds by means of an oscillating electric field and making it follow a circular path by means of a transverse magnetic field the transverse magnetic field means a field perpendicular to the plane of motion of the charged particle in the previous video the motion of a charged particle in magnetic field we have already studied that if a charged particle is moving normal to the direction of the magnetic field it follows a circular path we have obtained an expression for the radius the time period and the frequency or the number of cycles number of revolutions which the particle performs in the magnetic field you'll do well to revisit that video before you try to understand this cyclotron now the construction of this uh, cyclotron we have a magnet electromagnet powerful magnet and s are the poles so magnetic field is directed downward from north to south there are two d's d1 and d2 you can see here these are in fact hollow half cylinders separated by a small distance and called d's because of the shape as you see from top a hollow half cylinder will look like a d in the center we have the ion source that is the source of the particles to be accelerated maybe the protons that is hydrogen nucleus or alpha particles or any other particle the d's they are connected to a high frequency oscillator the function of the oscillator is to provide an oscillating electric field that is it makes d1 alternately positive or negative with respect to d2 then we have a window here a small window w here from which the accelerated charged particles move out a deflecting plate p here helps to move the particles out of the cyclotron capital r here denotes the radius of the d's the entire assembly of the cyclotron is in a highly evacuated chamber where the pressure is reduced to 1 millionth of a millimeter so that the charged particles after being speeded up they do not interact with air molecules now the working see a charged particle once produced here let's suppose it's a proton when it is produced say it finds d1 negative if d1 is negative the particle that is proton will be pulled by d1 and it will be speeded up enters d1 with a high speed inside d1 is a hollow conductor the electric field effect becomes zero only magnetic field remains therefore the particle will follow a circular path and it will complete a semi circle once it completes a semi circle and moves back in the gap here out of d1 in the gap the polarity of the d is reversed that is d2 becomes negative and d1 becomes positive now it is pulled by d2 and enters d2 with a higher speed 
and completes a larger semicircle inside T2. As it comes out of T2, T1 becomes negative and it is again pulled in the gap. So inside the days it moves with a uniform speed because we remember that the magnetic field cannot speed up a particle. In the gap it is speeded up because of the oscillating electric field. So this process is repeated till the particle attains sufficiently high speed and is pulled out with the help of the a voltage applied to the plate P so that it moves out of the window and hits a target. The theory part, the centripetal force required for circular motion is provided by Lorentz magnetic force. So we have mv square over r equal to qvb sin theta, here theta happens to be 90 degree because field is perpendicular to motion of the charged particle. So you get qvb or r is equal to mv by qb that leads you to the period in which the particle completes one revolution as 2 pi r by v equal to 2 pi m by qb therefore frequency is 1 of 1 over period equal to qb over 2 pi m the kinetic energy gained by the particle is half mv square you can substitute for v from here v is qrb over m that gives you the relation q square r square b square over 2 m the maximum kinetic energy which the cyclotron can impart to a particle is a function of r alone here because other factors are constant factors the maximum value of r is capital r the radius of the d's therefore this is expression for maximum kinetic energy q square b square r square over 2 m there are some limitations of this device that is cyclotron one the variation of mass has not been accounted for we know relativistic variations in mass at very high speeds attained by the particle which are comparable to speed of light we have this variation in mass m naught is rest mass or the mass of the particle when it is at rest m is equal to m naught over 1 minus v square the speed of the particle over c square so when as the particle gains very high speed this frequency which is resonating frequency or magnetic resonating frequency will have to be altered this cyclotron has no arrangement for varying the frequency secondly it cannot speed up the electrons because electrons being very light they gain very high speeds and because of this above equation they go out of step with the accelerating field by out of step we mean the particle coming in the gap and the opposite d repelling it that is what we mean by out of step so it cannot be used to step up the electrons the uses of the cyclotron are you can use it for study of nuclear structure because high speed particles can be made to interact with the nucleus cause nuclear reactions which give us a pointer to the structure of the nucleus it is used to prepare radioisotopes which are required for radio medicine that is the diagnostic purposes as well as curative purposes the particles which we get here particularly the protons they are used to speed up neutrons for nuclear reactions because the high speed protons can be made to collide with the neutrons to provide high speed protons <coughs> 